Kaboni na ne hong la kajenu mo raising babies 101 ribu akadi fantasies. We tackle language preferences for our children. How do you encourage a baby who's just beginning to walk? Our yummy mummy Rifilo Madumo talks to us about motherhood. All this and more coming up. Firstly, to my beautiful studio audience, Lili Nakohai. Lena Nehong Lakumpie Nula Raising Babies 101, where fine moms and dads connect and share parenting tips. When I was growing up, I was told about Father Christmas and other such fantasy characters like the Tooth Fairy. Many deem this harmless, but there are those who believe that this is wrong and that we are lying to our children. Fairy tales and fantasies versus reality. Joining us to discuss these concerns is educational psychologist Dr. Ken Resnick. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you. Thanks so, for inviting me. Tell me something, Doctor. What is your take? Is this harmful or harmless? I think, you know, they make issues of too many things these days. Kids have a natural sense of curiosity when they're young. And they love fantasies. That's why they watch cartoons. They, they have Snow White. They have all of these things. Yeah. They're all fantasies. Yeah. Part of their growing up, and it, and it actually pricks their curiosity, mm. where they can play on their own. They create their own little characters. I remember us growing up, uh, the, the girls played housey housey. Yes. Made tea. We used to play cowboys and crooks. People <laughs> just fell all over the place. And they're making far too much of an issue. Yes. The problem is mm. that they're killing kids' uh, kids' ability to fantasize mm. by just sticking them in front of a TV, not encouraging any creativity in a real sense of the, of the word, and keeping them at home too much and entertaining the child. Mm. So the child's sense of curiosity and fantasy actually gets lost. Mm. As they get older, you know, a young child doesn't really understand. He sees for the Christmas. I do remember one Christmas Eve, uh, my grandparents lived in Kensington. I was waiting for Father Christmas to ride across the sky. <laughs> and the next day there was uh, presents there. You know, it, it's a great fantasy. But mm. no way did we go through any trauma when by the age of six or seven, all of a sudden we knew he wasn't real. Yeah. Uh, it, it doesn't work. Kids don't get traumatized by that. Is there a time where you have to sit your kids down and say, OK, mommy's the one who's been putting money in her slipper at night and Father Christmas is actually dead? Uh, it, it comes automatically. The yeah. age of six, seven, you start realising the fairy was something else. Mm. But there's no way that traumatises. The only thing that traumatises children is abuse. Mm. Verbal, sexual, physical, emotional. Yeah, so do you encourage fantasies? Uh, but it's not that you encourage, it's a mm. natural thing. Yeah. Kids like to fantasise. You've got to enable them to, uh, to fantasise. You've got to, it's up to the parent mm. to give them, whether it's Snow White, whether it's a little tea set that they can play with, little things that they can play with and create and fantasise, yeah. play little games. Yeah. Uh, I can tell you a funny little story. Yeah. Uh, I remember when I, my little stepchild was, uh, by the way, five or six, I used to pretend to phone for the Christmas and report on their behaviour. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I'd say, you know, if they were good, I'd tell him, no, she wants a little doll, et cetera, et cetera. But she had a habit of using like half a toilet roll when she went to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> so the one night I phoned for the Christmas and I said to him, you know, she's actually been very good, but I think she loves toilet rolls. <laughs> and I think it might be a good idea to bring her two dozen toilet rolls for, for Christmas. And she's yeah. saying, no, no, I want to do <laughs> Oh, I said, just wait a minute. I, I, I think she's changed her mind. And then I said, uh, all right, but I'll let you know. I'll let you know if she's not using as many and then you can bring the doll. <laughs> the next day she was using normal toilet paper. So, you know, you play into their fantasy and they, they love it. As long as you've got to make them feel safe and not frighten kids and so on. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Doctor. Appreciate your insight on that. Hi, yeah, I tell you, but yes, what with the multiple languages we already boast in our country, Mzansi, there's still this preference. What is your choice, Coagapod, your mother language. Well, that's what's coming up next. You decide. <laughs> I prefer English because of uh, at least the Fanekwako, most of child uh, person, they don't know how to speak English and something like that. At least the Bakongo or Kulumi Singi, Sumaba, Tola, 
even if they decide, we decide as a family or a rochaka kumarain, they must know or batantiba bele language yakwa, was katlaka taka and like the languages and whatever. If well English is there, bagay bele koskolum, and they can talk English koskolum, but then herli go rai, it's home language. Control the last baby, of which is a language I elongate her mother tongue, but uh, when she grows up, I would like her to speak. English because English is an international language and it can open doors for her. I think it's why it's good to buy in there. It's long when we buy dinner. It's cutting say to have us all be to be banga go, be banga afford. So then, what man? Je, have us abandon a bit to banga fan nuts. So I think it's why it's good to abandon a bit to buy in there. It's good to have a little good at least. We be ne change in yana la imtabe. Well, some interesting thoughts there. We are joined by speech therapist Samantha Smith, Anato Kouani, she's a child minor, as well as oh, the Khrobla family and the Munzi family. So, studio it Kleti Kajin. Let me start with you, Johan. Uh, you've got a beautiful family. You've brought your wife along. You've brought uh, little Neo, Nina Neo, mm -hmm. as well as uh, uh, Auntie, uh, Anna here as well. Mm -hmm. uh, what have you decided as a family when it comes to language? We as a family have decided that um, as much as the people they say that they want to be internationally competitive and yes. speak English, we decided that we would like to be nationally relevant as well. Mm -hmm. So we have asked Anna, who spends a lot of time with Nina, mm -hmm. um, to only speak Zulu to her, mm -hmm. because we'd like her to speak a local language as well. It's amazing. So I guess Nina's going to grow up learning three languages, English, Afrikaans, Absolutely. and Isi Zulu. Well, at least three languages. <laughs> at least English. three languages, that's the mission. <laughs> yes. OK, Mama Anna. Uh, are you ready to take on challenge? So it's a nice challenge. Uh, uh -huh. this one. Okay, my Anna. here I bring you in. You are just the coolest daddy there with your daughter on the lap. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, what, what is the decision how as to language Um, you know, the problem is um which I don't know if it's a challenge, but um they speak I I'm Soto. Kimusoto and their mother, and um, they go to crash, and obviously the crash is English. So, and the reason why they they spend more time speaking in English is because of the communication at crash. They used to struggle. My first son, my firstborn, used to struggle a lot. Yeah, he's right over there. Yes. So he used to struggle a lot when it comes to communicating at crash with the other kids. So. Um, the teachers actually asked us to spend just a bit more time speaking in English with them. Mm. But I speak Sesotho with them, and their mother speak sometimes Pedi, but it's more English, you know, with them. So I think it's it's balancing. Yeah, it's, it's balancing. balancing them. Yeah. This so. is where I bring you in as an expert, Samantha. Mm. Your thoughts on the two family scenarios? Um, I think it's fabulous. Mm. Just listening to both approaches and what you're doing, I think. Um, I 100% agree. There's so much research to say that children who speak more than one language, actually their brain development, their ability to concentrate in class, um, and their actual structure of their brain is far better than those of us who might only speak one language, number one. So scientifically, um, I've, you know, there's great evidence for it. But in terms of how you're approaching it within your families, I think is fabulous. I think the fact that you've got one person only speaking one language to the child and focusing on that language gives a great foundation and a basis for all the language to be developed, you know, so that you know, and it also creates less confusion for mm -hmm. the child. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you also raise a good point in terms of um, when children go to schooling, the big challenge when you're speaking, you know, Sutu or Zulu at home is obviously often the language of learning is English, English and yeah. that does create a challenge for children. Mm -hmm. But um, I think it's great that you are still speaking Sutu and mom has decided to 
introduce a bit more English from yeah. her side. What you could also do is just make some time, have half an hour a day where you just focus on an English activity mm -hmm. um, to help kind of move that English development mm -hmm. along so that you don't have to compromise, yeah, yeah, you know, on the home language, which is yes. so important. So we do have a speech therapist here, and I'm sure both of you <laughs> as parents uh, might have a question to pose at Samantha on your journey of, 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 of you know, making your child bilingual or trilingual, mm -hmm. if there's such a word. Do you have a question specifically with your case to Samantha? Yes, you know, um, I mean, obviously there's so many opinions on this. Mm -hmm. And many people focus a lot on mother tongue education and mm -hmm. those type of mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. What's your view regarding that? Um, look, mother tongue is exactly your mother tongue will be your your predominant language. I mean, so it's if you've been exposing her. I mean, she's so little; she's what six months, mm. and you've been exposing her equally to each of your languages. I mean, each of those languages essentially will be a foundational mother tongue language, and she will inevitably be mul fully multilingual, which mm. is which is fabulous. That means she can communicate adequately in all languages that you've exposed her to. Mm. I think the way you're approaching it. Mm. is perfect and essentially her mother tongue will be English, Afrikaans mm. and Zulu. Mm. Mm. So would you then say um, the first five or seven years mm -hmm. are the most critical years in terms 100%. of language? Or... 100%, yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. So, and yeah, at 90% of our brain development happens within the first six years of life. Mm -hmm. So this is where we're setting all those foundations for language development and language learning. So the sooner we expose children, the better. I think another thing I've learned in life is that also introduce vernacular books. So books mm. in Sizulu, books in, in Sibeli, books yeah. in, and, and have that moment with your child where you read through the books. Because I, I found it teaches me too. Oh, uh, definitely. And, and, and actually helps my reading ability. Yeah. So yes. So thank you so much. Oh, little Nina's having a good time there in the audience. <laughs> a truly wonderful discussion with the kids and the parents. We thank you so much all for coming in today. Thank you. Thank you. Truly thank the discussion you. of languages is an ongoing one. We have given you a variety of thoughts and opinions about this, but at the end of the day, you decide. Let us know your thoughts on social media platforms and we'll be back after this. Coming up on Raising Babies 101, we continue putting your children first and we talk teaching baby to walk. Later, our yummy mummy speaks to us. So stick around, Reaboa. <laughs> Raising Babies 101. Now, when is the best time to encourage baby to walk? Do we wait for the little one to show some signs or do we push them? Time for Easy Peasy. <laughs> Well, here to help us find out when to do it and what to do when it comes to baby and walking, we have Os Carol Mufolo. Welcome, Os. Okay, so Os Carol, okay, step by step. Abe was umzimba waki. Okay. Because umtuana also seven say into ayazi you. Okay. So if umtuana eng ayaz into into out unai, anya was with seven says. So briefly, so when you say it put a mat outline, okay. Leo Ibonis is umtuana abe away of Ipodiak. Okay. So in Zoyenza. But whatever Oyenza, you Oyenza very slowly, and it and my and the pressure is soft, Gabo. It depends if umtuana is a natural birth. The pressure is soft, but if umtwana is a natural um, cesarean, yeah. the pressure is hard. Oh. Okay, so you hold the feet. Now remember, we are dealing with e walking, mm. and then again, young kinder sends are you sends are three times. Why okay. sends are three times? Why? Because if brain is not that long to register. Oh. If umtwana are very fast, sometimes umtwana we am overstimulator. A full mutana or hyper, a full mutana or restless, and it jalonjo, funnel of bambi in yaw. Okay, and then for a walking also would seem encourage you to a hambe and yawen because Funugu make a short mutana, Iprenia carriage is out in yaw gentle. You massage the feet. So we are massaging. We are massaging in yaw, and then you full Amazon, then you count one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
Not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh, eight. Slow. Slowly. Maybe beat one, beat two. Yes, beat. because okay. if a massage is fast, your brain needs to register. Because remember, okay. we create an injury from our toes to a brain. Yeah, okay. yeah, also. There's a pathway that you have to create. You do that three times. Mm -hmm. And then you turn over in your and then starting from the big toe to the small toe. Yes. You pinch one. Two, and then you pinch. Tight or but high cool. Okay. High cool. But enough to turn the nail red. Uh -huh. Okay. And then the other thing is whenever mom massage on mm. we try to come in the language yako in mother tongue. Yako. Okay. Because that's where evil cap starts. Uh -huh. Okay. So you do that three times. And then parati, usually when a mama says learn, uh. you push. We have massage. So. Yeah, massage and just slowly. Unga is fast because fast they are over stimulator. Okay. So whatever you do on the left, you do it on the right. On the right. And yes. how often we the exercise then how often? We try mobile we say turn up the television and it. So it's cut mouth shell in do something. Okay. So remember, as often as possible. Yes. Remember it the more you touch, mm. the more register the whole brain. Oh. The more um stimulator, the more a Away and um, in mistake, Australians and Guti before Umtana a hamper. We we before Umtana as a crawler, yeah. We start pulling them standing position, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we finally see some to reduce that, okay. Because also jumper is crawling, uh, and crawling is very important, yeah, for yes. my hips and what for my hips. And Umtana also a hamper only if I'm a core muscles, so I'm a core muscles now. Sega strong. As for him, to know also select class in the end so. So which means, this is cut my actually so a class in a concentrator on a body than you go to stress or tin. Then so to him to know on journey on a problem a class in. Yes. So I'm a milestones in je. Go part halu set so hard the milestones than one ha hardly read what I'm a. Okay. First before is come on what he I'm a milestones. Which ones are there for Utumtana Sigare to Hamba? The importance of Ama Mastons is to see what he is a sense again a good brain. If brain no tani fanani anyanis. Sometimes you are taking anyanis and sharing it, but more we cut out, we told there's a brown ring. So Ama Mastons are fanna with that anyan with a brown ring. If Umtana and a skipper any Mastons, sometimes you get that brown ring in the brain. So if first master is 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 sucking, utum tana ken, utum tana suck, and then if second master in neck control, utum tana we are calling uti mom fage on the tummy, we are calling our lifter ikanda, and then if master elandelayo is rolling, utum tana fandebe wazu move from this position to that position. And then the other master in the life is sitting. Umtana Fanebe was with Sal unaided. Umtana Fane as Sale, listening, I'm Sege, listening, I forgot my box. And then Ellen the Lion Gubamba. Umtana sing, I'm forced to go Bambisa isn't before it's time. And then the next one is crawling. Ellen the Lion, you go cruiser. Like Mazo, yes, Mazo, Kalugu, Ulandela is in tongue like furniture. And then I will say Hamba. Okay. So, oh, Hamba, no cleaner. No cleaner. Let's go for Stella Banar, but when I pick up. No, yes. And then Harry Fetam, when I go for the final advice, Capo, the final tips, double melibon tateco high lebana. Okay. Oh, Kala. Intense way Hamba. Impilum to an ekala from Kuum, Mom Tola, from Ete Wanum Tola, Mtoana, Fanele Ashali so. Remember, the more to an estraclisha, the more it develops my muscles, the more a tola in neck control, the more a tola co muscles development, young into Iashangana. So, city, if they struggle, they develop. And if they develop, they learn. And if they learn, They've got freedom.
You've got freedom. Yes. Yo, yeah, I'm routine today. <laughs> hey, Nana. Coming up next is your baby shower. Okay, viewers, as we all know, parenting can be very, very costly. To make life a little easier for you, our baby shower segment is to shower you with gifts. To enter this competition, all you need to do is answer yes or no to one simple question correctly. Should baby be encouraged to walk? Answer yes or no on our social media platforms. Answer correctly and one lucky viewer will randomly be selected to win a baby hamper voucher valued at 1,000 Rand. The winner will be announced on our social media. Best of luck. Haribo while we talk about formal adoption. And in Baby's Health A to Z, we unpack the letter U. <laughs> I'm Khela Khape, you're still watching SABC2, and this is Raising Babies 101. There are many children in need of good, loving homes in this country, and many parents looking to adopt. How do you do it formally? This is our big question, Yakajin. Harashev. So Mama ke wamle chala na two three months three months am chata am kulisa am chala na ye since then ang zang sa pin ng imbone but odong mas go tuo chala go pin eh ulo ko ni chala na im kulisa kuraite ni am fagashi sa ko mama ko ni most but agam phone um mobile ng pum adopt as kubo oam. But I'm mm Malay, -hmm. which number I call Abba Zalbaki also bass. Just in Jogutim adopted Abbe Sekail for two mail. So Nambilan, I go my social worker, a post baking, Hamba Nai Mama Corner, Safira Sakulumanab. I'm a social worker at the Angsi Beans. So Nasa mm Benz and Wami Yamba Pindra and Abachaluti, Mina Abba Zalbam, Bayang Bonele every month. Nay. Es jenga bantu kati bamfage, es gomtani gumpuli sa bamfage kama chini bampatalela. So which means manje since aganjan, but kim no wena au na kinga wena si agbono kuto mamo right, umkuli sa ngi lele right, umuntu mele as abangi mama ke. Zahamba, zapuma, si zanga pa si si zala ingine. Nanti mina since aganjan manje watay angas. Okay, it is something you're actually in those rooms, but you're longing in touch with more. It's been a while, it's Angzominza, Nitimin Angzominza. More Tom Fony Minangzotin. So, Menaban social development from Babu's Woody. Oka Doctor Umduana. It's about money or it's about K. Understand? So, Menabing it's in Nega Ekal for two men. A coolie Anna. Yam tanned mobile. Too much. Yam tanned. Mama. And the man of the bazon Kroganisana. I don't know what's going to happen again in the day. A very real reality uh, there. We are joined in studio by Ndadek Abambangwa. He's a social development spokesperson who will chat to us about this. Jumel and Dad. How do we get to be a lazy lingobile? I mean, it's quite a sensitive situation. Ugari Arabayo, how for one again? Um, in the first instance, I call a remolebu or slays for Hong Kong. Um, Babanga Tabo mobile. Uh, majority of them, but well, a fellow giddy neighbor. We got many children by Long Badula as child headed households, but look on like little brothers and sisters. So, intervention in the community is welcome. 
in the first instance. Um, social worker that dealt with the case. Hey. That's not how we do work okay. in social development. It is true, Hore, care alone is not enough. Because we remember Runa as social development, we are the adoption. It's like the court. In other case, we'll prepare the case. Runa social workers will provide the court with evidence. Your Runa by law in terms of Children's Act. Mm. We are the custodian of children. So mm. every child who doesn't have a parent is the child of government. Yeah, okay. In the case of your Ausleys, yes. Ar she herself can't be a custodian of a child, even if she gives a care, because love alone is not enough. Hey, she's been Absolutely. doing the job, she's been Absolutely. taking care. Absolutely. So how many exception can case help? No, no, the law won't be able to. In fact, we're just providing care alone won't be enough. So because our the parents are high, which we encourage, in fact, the social development I can be on, on record now, that we will be sending people who will go and uh, assist the case. Mm -hmm. If the parents are providing care mm -hmm. and there's a proof of steady income, Runaya's government, mm -hmm. we're interested in knowing who Rumana or today, tomorrow, and until she grows up. We can't just take chances for it. Mm. We need to satisfy the court mm. that the one or her best or his best interest in this case. So if Oslizia well got prove her and that told us the income, what is the well, minimum the time? Even, even if I get told look at the parents' side, we provide foster care. So those things will be taken care of in the courts. Mm. In fact, once social workers are there, they must assess the home. Is it suitable for, for children? Is the child happy as is obviously is the case? Mm. If social workers could satisfy that, I can keep the mm. until we take the matter to the court. I can't commit to the court uh, time frames because mm. those are the But I Elizia guy tolang from Lona, a social depart department. I commit, the I commit that the social workers will be there. Mm. We'll send them to do proper work. I don't think the social worker was lazy, I boning. Correct. Mm. It's not correct. We don't go to people and say, there's nothing we can do. Mm. We don't do that. Mm. That's not what government does. We can't so, wait for uh, just government. process yeah, Lona from social department, Hale Kalahu. Who prepare a case alone or a courting? Can process alone, just first, generically. Yeah, the first thing is that we just need to have a social worker who will assess mm. two critical things. The first thing is that mm. is, mm. The, mm. is that a proper dwelling mm. where a child can be safe, mm. a roof over their head, and so on. Mm. Secondly, is to ensure that the household itself mm. is conducive for a child. And then next is to make sure that there is a means the Rumanao can be looked after, mm. to look after it. Once those things are satisfied, we can then approach the court with the foster care process. Mm. So how do we have a Oslizi? Or is she going to know what we're going to do? Oslizi, Ramulebu, he said. It's a good work, and we would like every South African, everybody who was South Africa, who go outing today, who is a million story, Oslizi, is a good example. Absolutely, yeah. Let's hear from our studio audience. Anyone have a question on Tata Kaba? Okay. Okay.面临各路不足，我们一夫是离子，我要出来干个龙头呢。龙头呢，我就可能一人一人，可是我妈妈给俺们付呢。在听那个苦路，我们要出来，我们才能够去做。我们要去做。我们要去做。我们要去
with foster care. Secondly, it is not advisable mm -hmm. to try and uh, cut corners in the system. I hear yours, Carol, when you say, maybe somebody would like high, but long hanela ka wana ka ora hakina income. We don't do that. What we do is we work with our people. Remember, government cannot be everywhere. Mm. Government does not have solutions to every problem. Mm. Government's business is not to solve people's problems. Government business is to help people solve their problems. Got you. I think it's a nice way to end that. Yes. Kaba, we appreciate your time. And I think Lizzie Lene, she's heard a lot and you've advised her well. Thank you very much for that, Thank you. Thank you. Well, Tamayanko Social Media, Raising Babies 101. Just search us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, as well as Instagram. Don't go anywhere. After the break, our yummy mummy, Rifile Madumo, joins us in studio to discuss being a mummy. And Babies Health A to Z, the letter U is decoded. <laughs> Raising Babies 101. Unpacking our baby's health A to Z today, we look at the letter U for UTI. A UTI, which is a urinary tract infection, happens when bacteria gets into the bladder or kidneys. Dr. Nili Siwe Zimo is here to help us unpack UTI. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you, thank you. It's an honor to be here. UTI. UTI is a infection that affects uh, the bladder yeah. and the pipes that go up to the kidneys or the kidneys. Okay. So it can affect the whole system. So we usually categorize it either into a lower UTI where it affects just the bladder and the outside structures okay. or an upper UTI. And Gubal for us because uh, our treatments they tend to be different. Mm. The urinary tract infection from the kidneys, um, or the system rather, from the kidneys right down to the, the outside, yeah. it's supposed to be bacteria-free, it's clean. Yeah, we'll there are others of the uh, parts of the body where which are able to harbor bacteria naturally, but mm. ang abina, any dangers in Zimbabwe. Mm. But the urinary tract in itself is bacteria-free. Okay. So it becomes very fussy, therefore, Talwood, if there's introduction of the bacteria, then there becomes a problem. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. Specifically. Yes. Um, how young can one be who told you UTI? Uh -huh. mm. It can start as early as possible. You mm. know, as early as possible, a couple of months, you can get a because UTI. Okay. Um, it, it's caused mostly by um, abnormalities in the system. So if it's two months, six months, mm. when they have a urinary tract infection, the first thing that we think about is that could there be an abnormality in the whole structure? Mm -hmm. Because that affects the flow of the urine throughout the system. So, Ribona Jamu Wanungumunyan. Um, we test it. Okay. We usually test it. The, the rule of thumb is you don't allow for UTI in a baby to happen more than twice. But other than that, um, well, hygiene, we, hygiene, as, hygiene. As you know? as well. Too much. Yes, yeah. generally children who are sick, they yeah. will be sick, they will be irritable, uh, sometimes high temperature, okay. that is usually a, a, a problem, a okay. big problem, and also they will urinate a lot, okay. you know, then that shows. Right. You know, you disease a condition and king difference. <laughs> <laughs> it is it is it is an infection it infection is a, it is an infection yeah um so that's a difficult uh, question difference between a disease and a condition mm. um i guess we tend to refer to diseases when we talk about things that are infectious like mm -hmm. i have said or situations that are not meant to be part of the body you, you know, know? Yeah, yeah. so with 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 urinary tract infection it's an infection it's something that comes and, and goes, goes. Okay. it's caused by a particular bacteria you eliminate the bacteria, it's going to go away okay, as well. Okay. But the interesting thing when it comes to Abantona uh, Bangani, especially your little girls, uh, is, is the way they wipe, how you teach them to wipe. We say oh. they must wipe from Forward. front to back. Okay. That is very important because if they wipe from back to front, in as much as it sounds simple, it looks simple to do, okay. it yeah, easily introduce, introduces the, the, the bacteria into the ureter. So, so that is where the problem Yes, yeah. prevention. Go from the front, front to back. back. Teach them as early as they can. With mm. the little guys, problem, uh, it, it becomes, especially when they are uncircumcised. Most uh -huh. of the time you find with, there are certain cultures which circumcise children as early as six weeks, yeah. but other cultures they wait until children are 
are older. So you know that, that the, the, the foreskin, it can easily harbor uh, some bacteria or even urine that ends up growing bacteria as well. So those are the things that we tend to look into. Mm. The most important thing is just teach your children about hygiene as early as possible. That becomes very important. Mm. Don't, don't be shy, because we tend to be shy. We are so shy about a, a private parts. We even have funny names for them, you know? <laughs> so, you know, it's very important that teach them, you know, the care as early as possible. And I guess the third thing is that it is treatable. It is so treatable. you don't really need to be afraid about it. Just the course of antibiotics a couple of days, it usually subsides. If it recurs, make sure that you uh, have it investigated as far as structural abnormalities are concerned. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Khotlalo are all about UTIs. We're very grateful. It's an honor. So you've heard it from the good doctor, everything you need to know about a UTI. We've shown you how to spot it, and most importantly, if there's something untoward, is someone a good doctor after this. Cecilia Talang, actress and mother, Rifilo Madumo, after the break. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Ritwala Pele, Kalenane Hola Kajen, Ula Raising Babies 101. Please help me welcome Yami Mami and actress Rufile Madumo. Hello. Hi. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Thank you. We could go around two babies. Fine. I mean, it's, it's a long, hard road, eh. but it's been good. It's eh. been wonderful. Yeah. How it's been good? What's been good? Well, from birth, developing a personality and seeing just how different both my sons are. You know, Marco is my first one and he's this like spirit child who's interested in astronomy and the stars. Oh. And to see Ra, who's my younger one, yes. who's just like this person who comes and disrupts everything, <laughs> you know? It's amazing to see how different they are hey. and just how special each child is. Hey. Yeah. Earlier in the show, Naribuaka, the massage to Chusamba and Hotsamaya. Your children with their journey and their different stages, um, how did that go for you? Marco, hey. uh, he was the one who just got up and walked mm. one day. But Ra did everything by the book. He sat, he crawled, and then he started walking. Eh. Yeah, eh. I guess each one is different. Yeah, no, as a mother, um, language What is your preference? Because some household that choose one language. Yeah, I want to eat it at because I'm not going to eat it. I'm not going to eat it. So Nile and because Nike is Zulu and I hate his toy. Rua English. Only one together. Yeah, like understand. me and him, right? Eh. But our children speak English Sitswana and Sizulu. Oh. Oh, but that's but the language that they speak the most is English, right? Mm. But I found that in my home, something that I actually didn't plan for mm. is what's happening and I actually have to work hard. Yeah. I know Hori uh, Munahao was with you through every step of Jenia Hakuya Hobambe. How important is it that they are present? Oh, I think it's very important, you know, because what we forget, Hori, Hobalunga, and Naku change up Pelobame more than Bandat, you know? So we have to remember, Hori, Bunda Telebone, they have to be involved. Eh. As mama, mm. they have to take the responsibility to come into the space, you know, to fit themselves in mm. wherever it is that they can fit in. Yeah. It takes, you know, we always say it takes a village to raise a child, you yes. know. So I think as much support as we can allow into our homes, mm. we need to take it. Now, mm. yeah. Really? And already get tornado almost. So I'm looking at you, Kamanabai, too, and career woman, and you are just slaying, Kamo, slaying, Kamo, slaying. The slayer, Jumpon Hakili Moki slayer. Hakili Kukai. I'm in sweats. I am Hakuna makeup. Hakun Kavereka. Kimu Sevet. Kimu Sevet. It really is. How do you juggle Gaufela? Two babies, Munmane, no clock at your attention. Kamo family clock at attention. Now I'm sad you. Kimereko. It's hard. You know, we Instagram ourselves. Eh. Oh, me and my children, they eh. with me breastfeeding eh. and gamoki api. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's not that easy. These mm. are the pictures that we put out, mm. but the work that it takes to just balance these things mm. requires some. And then also, on top of that, you have to make time for yourself, mm. you know, which we all forget. 
most of the time. Mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. But the only way for you to have balance and for your children to be happy is if you take care of yourself too. If you are happy, mm -hmm. then your children can be happy. It's you true. know? Even if it's just to close the toilet door eh. so you can go to the loo by yourself, eh. which I, I haven't done in about six years. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but can, you know? So we need to remember those little things just so, you know, ourselves, we can just remember, okay. Mm. Yeah, no, get about how we love and can go after one how to take away some time away from work. Would you say that did you a world of good, Gabo? What did you think? Yeah, about it that really group? did. I think it's important because after Marco was born, I, I took three months off work, and then once I had Ra, because my job is just so hectic, the acting world is just so hectic. Um, it's like 12 hour days. Mm. I decided to actually take like a year off mm. so that I could take care of both my children and eh. spend that time with them. Make sure that the foundation, you know, how they grow their speech, mm. their walking, their eating, all those things that build up children are in place before I can go back to work again. It was hard um, because then I was broke, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> but um, it was important for my children and for my family for me to take that time out mm. to make sure that my children are raised in the way that I want to raise them. Absolutely. You know, talking about um, raising Manama how as you and your husband, uh, Laluana, over some things, Kapo, everything's agreed upon with regards to raising uh, Manama. Of course, Laluana. <laughs> of <laughs> course. Um, I am a very free spirit. Hey. So, when I was like, I'm going to get a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit You know, they disrupt everything. But my husband came out to a discipline. Uh -huh. You know, at dinner time, I was the laptop, the iPad. We must all sit down and have a meal together. You know, he likes structure. He likes discipline, which is, for me, I'm like... <laughs> Let them do what they want to do. They They're exploring, you know. <laughs> so I think it's good to have that balance. You know, this is how you know this is how we become better people in society. Mm. And I think it's also good to have that freedom, mm. you know, to be whoever it is and whatever it is that you want to be. Talking about freedom, you're looking freely beautiful, honey. Thank you. So go part of the secrets, little because I know breastfeeding will be hung out like who any someone. Yeah. So I believe in that a lot. All my kids were breastfed, mm. all of them, and like no formula, none at all. For how long? Two years. Okay, exclusively. 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 Mm -hmm. I was lucky to be able to do that, and I was lucky to be allowed the time on set to be able to pump when I needed to so I could store milk for my children. Oh, nice. Um, mm. So if you can, do it. But if you can't, I mean, there's help, you know. Okay. So don't feel bad about don't it. Don't feel bad. Yeah. Now, let's water from our studio audience. Hi, Rufile. Yes. My name is Victoria. I'd like to ask, Uita Omotwana and your husband in Zulu, but the naming is Gudla Mako, Gudla Ra. Yeah. Can you please explain to that? Okay. So, um, my firstborn, Gimako eh. Sini Luwabi. Okay. Okay. So, his names are Zulu and Tswana. Okay. Makosini. Eh. Where the kings reside, Loapi, everything above us. That oh, is great. Beautiful. So, yes. So hey. he's the greatest king that lives above all of us. Oh, beautiful. And then uh, Ra, Mabiso Kake Malibu, Ye Lerang. So may the light return. Oh, what beautiful yeah. names, man. Garanka Kiwa Music, Ye Lion King. What beautiful names. Linkile na koho, ho, ko name of Anabalona, I'm sure. Yeah, because I think. It's 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 strange. I think children name themselves. Oh, really? Why wow, real? Um, because they come as who they are. Like there isn't much. You can only be there to support them. You know. I think as parents, we spend so much time trying to create these people, trying to like make them fit into molds, mm. when they are already people. Mm. And we need to just be there to make sure that they grow up to be the people that they were meant to be. Oh, that's beautiful. Could you offer any final tips for for on parenting? Hmm. Tips. Remember to take care of yourself. Eh. Drink water. <laughs> eat right. This is for the moms mm. because I don't do it. I know that I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's important. It's something that we need to remember that we are just as important in the family unit. We are important. That's my one top tip. Don't forget about yourself. <laughs>
don't forget about yourself, Ralebo Kharifilwe, for coming in and sharing about your beautiful babies and your husband and how your family um, operates. Thank Rale you Bukhari. so much for having me. Thank you. Unfortunately, it's that time where I have to love and leave you. Kopales kale balane, kopales koko meleng banabarun. Kare banabarun, kebo kamuso barun. I'd like to thank all the parents who have shared their stories, our wonderful studio guests, my in-studio guests as well. Lili Nagohai, thank you for tuning in. To find out more about us and to carry on with the conversations, Mushong, get to social media, Sheba Raising Babies 101. For me, Carol Lafori, see you next week. Bye-bye. Welcome to Pep Talk, your go-to place for everything to do with your little one's upbringing. For parents, milestones are a definite way of keeping track of your child's development and health. So, today we are talking walking, and I'll be giving you a few tips on how to encourage your kids to walk. Between ages 9 and 12 months, your baby will have taken their first steps. Make sure you've prepared for this special moment. Once you can see your toddler is interested in walking, it's really important to find shoes that fit properly. Otherwise, your toddler could stumble more and take longer to develop the skill. When looking for shoes, make sure you look for the right fit. Comfort is paramount. Go for pairs like these that are perfect for toddlers learning to walk. To figure out the perfect fit for your toddler's shoes, make sure that your pinky fits in snugly between your child's ankle and the back of the shoe. The more comfortable your child is in their shoes, the more confident they will be to take those first steps. Bear in mind that your baby needs to be comfortable as they start exploring the world through walking. Get comfortable clothing for your child and make sure their knees are covered because they're going to fall a few times. You can grab cute grows and pants for ages 9 to 18 months. Send us pictures of your child's milestones on our social media pages and use the hashtag PepTalk. Thank you for watching Pep Talk. Remember, if you want to stand a chance to win with Pep, get onto our social media pages and enter our weekly competition. You'll stand a chance to win some great prizes. See you next time.